I'm Dave Gray. Thanks for coming in and uh, for this session. Uh, John Schull from First Command. I'll let you introduce your your party here when I get done. But uh, and talking about this event last year, we held what you're going to do in the worship center in here last year, and we busted we were busted out of this place. So when we took the facilities here, we wanted to make good use of it. And in talking with John. Uh, my wife and I have been sponsors since 1998, and one of the things we've always seen is uh, MIDs don't necessarily, when they prepare to go into the fleet, uh, have their financial house in order and are thinking of the things they need to do before entering the fleet. So talking with John, uh, he offered to give a presentation about financial literacy for the MIDs. Obviously the MIDs aren't here, but hopefully you can help them when you go back home uh, to get take the message here and uh, try to work with them and possibly uh, you know, get some further assistance from John and his, uh, his people. So without wasting more time, John, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Dave. And thanks for inviting us very much. Uh, first of all, welcome parents of class of 2015-16, and we met earlier today, members of the of, of parents from class of 2017. So first of all, thanks for raising these great young people. Uh, just incredible. We work with them a lot, and we're delighted to meet the people who started them off with their lives. Uh, the reason we're here is to add something to what you expected, and that is a little bit about how to prepare for graduation week. We also want you to think about how to help prepare your midshipmen for their future in their careers. It's a lot bigger question. So uh, we're going to give you a couple of ideas and offer some, some uh, coaching services for you that will give you that, that insight. Uh, our presentation is short. I'm John Scholl from First Command Financial Planning. It's a company with 200 offices around the country, as, as far away as Guam. If you send your, if your new ensign or a Marine goes to Guam, we have an office there. And uh, not a lot of uh, advisors there, but uh, that's another matter. Uh, we've been around for 55 years, helping military families. Our mission is coaching, coaching those who serve in their pursuit of financial security. And we take that very seriously. I don't think that uh, Tiger Woods would have been really very successful without a coach, and we feel the same way about military uh, families, and they're the most the people who really deserve it the most. But before we, we cover any serious topics, we want to have a little fun. So we're gonna we're gonna challenge you guys a little bit about military acronyms. Now I'm sure a lot of you have served on active duty, and if you haven't, you can cheat. You can ask your neighbor. But we're gonna throw out five footballs, one at a time, uh, starting with Gretchen, and uh, whoever catches it and hangs on to it, read your acronym and tell us what it means, and there's a prize that you're, you'll get. It's not insubstantial. Uh, it's a Starbucks card that you can pick up at our table once you uh, finish here. Right afterwards, we'll give you your prize, we promise. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, Gretchen's got the best arm in the group, uh, so uh, she's got, if you catch a football, tell us what your acronym is and then uh, what it means. <laughs> uh, it's SGOI, um, basically government life insurance. Okay. Connected to the military. Very good. What are the exact letters? We'll give you credit for that. That's exactly That's right. What are, the, what are the exact words? Anybody know? Sir. Service members group life insurance. Smart group. Very good. This is. Do you know, anybody know how much it is now? Four hundred thousand. Very good. It was twenty thousand when some of us in this group came on active duty. We won't talk about who. But uh, so it's changed a lot. Those, those benefits are important. It's important to know that. Okay. Next football. Who's next? Uh, Mike. <laughs> I have no idea what name. Uh, TSP, is that what it is? Yes. Um, you can ask for help. You can phone a friend. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anybody have an idea? TSP. I heard it. Safety plan. What was it? Thrift Savings Plan. Great. Thrift Savings Plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Very good. Thanks for your help. You can both share the Starbucks card. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the thrift savings fund? Anybody know? 
<laughs> it is. It's awesome. It's Retirement a, planning. Government 401k. Very low cost. Exactly. Uh, it's available to military families, not to midshipmen, unfortunately, but it's available to it comes out before taxes. That's right. Pre-tax. So if you put in, how much can you put in in a year if you're under 50 years old? Eighteen thousand. Um, Eighteen thousand. Oh, you even have the new number. Boy, we, that. we need another Starbucks card. That's that's, 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 that's <laughs> What percentage? This is a tough one. What percentage of military families participate in TSP? Probably four percent. Fifteen. What'd you say? Four. Somebody said fifteen. Fifteen. Eighteen. Very good. Eighteen percent. One out of five takes advantage of the incredibly cheap government program that you that has five choices and bonds and equities that's great for those families. And when can you start taking that money out? When you graduate from the military. No, sir. Take it out. Well, put it in. Right. Yeah. Put it in <laughs> at graduation. When can you start using the money? When you retire. 52. Keep, keep guessing. 59. 59 and a half. Same as a 401k or 403b. Uh, government employees have the benefit, and so do military families. The only, dis the only disadvantage is TSP for military families is not matched. Yeah. Okay, who's got my third one? Glenn. Any takers? Okay, ladies. No, don't even. <laughs> BAS? BAS. Basic allowances. Basic allowances. For what's the S? Subsistence. Subsistence. Anybody know what that is? Food allowance. Food. 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 Very good. <laughs> I don't know why the Navy and the Army don't just say food, but it is that it's a certain amount of money, and officers get that because they don't they're on what they call separate rations most of the time, depending on their deployment status. So it's, it's a, a benefit that the midshipmen, when they graduate, will, will get as ensigns and, and lieutenants in the Marine Corps. Very cool. Okay, who's next? Hi. Rebecca. Anybody? Oops, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you surprised me. Well, you were the first one who touched it, so you can sit there. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. BAH. BAH. Housing, housing allowance. I guess basic allowance housing. Very good. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Another another uh, benefit. Is it taxable? No. No. Pretty cool. How much is BAS in the Washington DC area? BAS. BAH. BAH. Nineteen hundred. Big bucks. Depends on your rank. Right. Nineteen hundred is a good number. It could be up to twenty-five, twenty-six hundred. What is it now? Thirty-two hundred. Okay, very good. We have an application for you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chuck, what have you got? <clears throat> Last one. Oh, 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 oh. nice quote. Les, uh, leave an earning statement. Awesome, oh, fantastic. What is that? Not big <laughs> <laughs> it tells it tells your ensign or marine what they're going to make every month, and and they ought to learn to read it. Why do you think that's important? See where your money's coming from. Yeah. Or how much do you trust the government to pay you what you're, you're supposed to get, or to take not take out what you shouldn't have taken out? You know, you ought to know how to read that kind of thing. Very cool. And track your leave too. Yes, sir. Track your leave. You're entitled to two and a half days a month of accumulated leave. If they don't remember that somehow, you know, the Department of the Navy has a memory problem sometimes. I know the Department of the Army does. Uh, well, let's, let's talk a little bit about my team and then a little bit about some financial uh, concerns that we think are important for your new graduates to learn. But before we do, I just want to emphasize the reason we did this little exercise, you get to keep the footballs, is that uh, this is a complex thing. Financial issues in the military is not intuitive and, and who coaches them? Parents. parents, maybe, if the parents know it. Their leaders should do it and therefore the leaders that graduate out of the Naval Academy should coach their folks about financial problems. We'll get to that in a moment. Let me introduce the team that's talking to you because everybody here, with one exception, are financial advisors and the other one will be. And uh, they're all a part of our, of our great team at First Command. We're down at 121 Cathedral Street, right off of West Street in Annapolis. 
First of all, Gretchen Butler, her claim to fame, all of them are financial advisors, but her claim to fame is she's a premier soccer coach. Gretchen, tell us about you. So I am an Army brat, so don't hold that against me. I'm also, there you go. I'm also an Army spouse, um, so I've spent most of my life around the military. My husband is now out and we're stationed in the, or I guess not stationed anymore, we just live here. <laughs> um, and one of the things that, as John said, our mission is coaching those who serve, and I am a financial coach. Um, we really believe in financial literacy. I'm one of our other advisors who's not here. Um, he and I do financial literacy classes in middle schools and high schools around the Annapolis area. Um, so if anyone here is a teacher and you want us to come do financial literacy, let us know. Um, we do it through Junior Achievement is right now who we do all of our financial literacy through. But when your midshipmen come through the door, if they come in and see us, that's really a focus that we try to do is to educate them not only on what they're doing, um, but really how they can help their soldiers and sailors. Um, I have a story that I'll tell later, but financial literacy in the fleet is a really a huge problem. Um, and it can affect so many different things. So that's one thing that we definitely try to do is make sure that we educate your midshipmen as they come through the door. Mike, Mike, wait, ordained minister and financial advisor. I've been in the financial world for about 30 years, but I got to a point where I understand that you need to teach other people to teach other people. That's how we do it. And, and for guys who's graduating from the Naval Academy that's becoming leaders, if they don't have the knowledge, they can't teach the next person. So, you know, we're, we're willing to do these um, coaching classes, even create plans for them um, for, for no cost. So that's, so that's a great thing. But, um, I've, I've been with First Command for about five years now, and I love what I do. I love helping people. Thank you. Glenn Becker. Um, I, when I started this career, I recognized that I had actually taken some of the principles that we hold dear now uh, to heart much earlier. I, uh, on active duty, there was a young E5 who worked for me, and he never got off the ship. We'd pull into these wonderful ports in the Mediterranean, and he never left the boat. When I ask him about it, he says, well, I got these plans after the Navy and I'm saving all my money. And I, I have to admit that I considered it one of the wins of my young leadership career that, long story short, I was able to impress on him the opportunities, I think, that he was passing up. And that was worth the 12 bucks that, you know, beer and pizza cost in Naples in 1988. Um, and he, 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 took, he finally took my advice and he came back and he said, thanks, I appreciate it. Um, I felt good about that, but more importantly, um, his performance increased. He much, he was much better incorporated into the team and, and just was more happy in his own skin. Um, and at the time, I thought I was helping out a, a young guy who worked for me, but I think in the big picture, what I was doing was I was pointing out opportunities that he was missing because he was otherwise so focused on what he thought his main goals were. And that's a lot of what we do here. Just make sure that people are looking at everything in front of them. Um, sometimes give them a different perspective and make sure they're put, putting all the their arsenal to use towards whatever their goals are. Um, and I think that's what I find most satisfying about what we do now. And it, it starts young, younger is better. Absolutely. I forgot to mention, Glenn speaks another language. He was a crypto tech in the Navy. So, you know, if you talk to him, ask him to speak English with you, and he'll, he'll be uh, much more understandable. He also flies light aircraft. So lots of fun stuff <coughs> away from work. Uh, Chuck Dixon is a Naval <coughs> Academy graduate, class of 1979. Thanks, John. So uh, it's good to watch this process go on over and over again. Uh, just watching all of you walk around and gather information reminds me of a few years ago when I was in the position that your midshipmen are in. Uh, I got involved with First Command in the early 80s as a junior officer when one of my best friends recommended I talk to them and see what I could learn. I did. One of the best things I ever did is I told someone a little earlier, I just wish somebody recommended me talk to them and get some of this knowledge when I was a midshipman and not wait the four or five years until I got exposed. Uh, after a career in the Navy as a surface warfare officer, I spent a lot of time with not only developing my own family's plan, but sitting with many of my sailors and trying to deal with some of the hardships that they face. And so some of those principles were available to me and it was very much a great tool to have in my toolbox. Uh, now, after almost three decades of uh, uniform service, uh, I'm sitting on the other side, excited about giving back and being able to talk to people about and coach them on their financial journey. Thank you, Chuck. 
Last but not least, our intern, Rebecca Hayevik, is engaged to a member of the class of 2015. Rebecca. Hi. Uh, like he said, I'm engaged um, to a 2015 grad. Um, and I just have to say that um, going to school right now for financial planning, I'm very thankful uh, for being around all of these lovely people um, and learning about the importance of financial planning and financial literacy at such a young age because it makes all the difference the earlier you start. Finally, um, I'm a West Point graduate, so someone said earlier, so don't, don't hold that against me. Uh, we will beat Navy eventually. <laughs> but uh, I started my career, I spent 20 years on active duty. I started uh, with a financial plan when I was five years on active duty. I wish I'd started as a cadet, and I was captain, an infantry officer, had our first child, and I said, holy smokes, what am I going to do? And as a result of doing that for 30 years, we put three kids through private college with no debt. So the kids start early, they do something simple, or they, at least they learn enough about what to tell their sailors not to do. And, and they'll make uh, some progress for their own, their own lives. Uh, the last thing we're going to tell you before we let you ask questions if you wish to, is a little bit about why we think it's important for us to be here. And that is financial literacy is about leadership. <coughs> Every single one of the graduates in the class of 15, 16, and 17 parents are here from those classes will face leadership challenges, and a great deal of those challenges will affect readiness and will affect mission accomplishment. And when a sailor comes to one of your, your children, kind of seems like an odd phrase after they become officers and so on, uh, and says, I can't deploy with the ship because I got to go get a payday loan. I can't deploy because my wife just left me because of a financial issue. Then it becomes real. So if we can help them as midshipmen before they get to a point where their deployment and their op tempo is so great that they don't have time to think about themselves and their plans and what they can do for sailors and they don't have the knowledge base to do it, if we can provide that help over the course of the next few months before they graduate, or for those with 16 and 17 over the next couple of years, then that's what we want to do. We want to help them understand some basic things like, how do you manage a budget? First of all, how do you do it yourself? There are probably a few people in this room who are still not sure the answer to that question. Uh, it, it's, it's something that's not easy. How do you deal with credit and debt? How do you deal with, with the day-to-day -day challenges I mean, the statistics are absolutely daunting. One out of five military families has to apply for food stamps every month. 20% of the military. This isn't specific services. One out of four has a credit card debt over $10,000. And the worst statistic is that divorces and suicides are almost exclusively related to financial planning. And it's not because of the op-tempo in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's because of the way they live, and they have nobody to go to to find out how to do better. There are services at Navy bases and Marine bases and units and so on, but the first responsibility is the leader, and your children are going to be leaders pretty darn quick. So what they take and what they can say to their sailors and Marines about how to keep their lives in order isn't trivial. It's huge. And we'd like to help you do that. What we're asking is think about either sending your men if you don't live close to Annapolis to see us. There's no cost for active duty. There are no fees for active duty advisory service from our company. But also, we'll give them a lot of tools. We'll sit down and say, here's how you might look at your budget. Here's how you might look at when you first arrive at your first duty station in San Diego. Is it pretty, pretty cheap to live in San Diego, right? <laughs> Woo! So, you know, they get this huge paycheck, absolutely huge, and they're rich, and then all of a sudden they got $5,000 of credit card debt. They have no idea how that happened. Because they have the credit card, right? Ever heard the story about, uh, I, I was an infantry officer, so I was working with uh, wonderful young infantry soldiers who sometimes didn't have a, a pot to pee in, and these, these kids would say, I don't understand why I don't have money, because I have checks. <laughs> That's an absolutely true story. So those are, those are the kinds of challenges we want to help you with and, and solve. And we'll also give you some ideas about resources 
what are the resources available at installations. Uh, Navy Relief is, is a great resource, but if you've got to go to them, then you've already got a problem. So the real resource is educational, uh, is financial literacy, figuring out what to do before the problems start. And we can give you both websites and information for your midshipmen and, and, and how to help them prevent bad behavior on the part of their sailors and marines. And that can affect their own readiness. The part of your sons and daughters, if they're faced with, with sailors and marines that can't deploy because they can't solve their personal problems. So it isn't trivial, it's huge. And we love to help if we can. So that's kind of our message. Uh, we want to, uh, I guess I, I call it, provide a template, if you will, We've created tools within the Annapolis office to help midship and figure out what, when they get that, anybody know the size of the loan right now? That the, the, pardon me? Right, $36,000. And you know, that's just free money, right? Pretty much. So what are you gonna do with it? Well, I'm gonna spend it. Well, is that the right thing to do? Now they gotta pay all that back, six or $700 a month for five years, and they got nothing to show for it. So there's a lot of ways that loan could be deployed, like a, a little Roth IRA for last year and this year, and maybe a little some some dollars to protect them. So there's there's a lot of solutions, but uh, if nothing else, they should know what kinds of issues their Marines and sailors are facing. So the last thing we want to say before we open it up to questions is uh, we want to thank all of you for the most important thing, and that's for raising the children that you raised to become officers in the Navy and the Marine Corps, that they will serve our country very well. So give yourselves a hand for that. We were told we have to be out of here by 11 o'clock. So uh, uh, we certainly are not gonna hold you here in any way, but if you have questions, we have a few questions we can ask you, but before we start, how many people are either on active duty now or have served on active duty? Wow, great, awesome. Thank you for your service. Does anybody have a story about a financial issue while you were on active duty that affected readiness in your organization that you want to share? <laughs> so I'll start. I'll break the ice. So I have a client who over Christmas, her nephew came home for Christmas, he's stationed in San Diego, he's an E2. Um, his mom sent him to boot camp with a good cushion of savings, like three, four thousand dollars. Went to boot camp, went to San Diego, lives on a ship, he has no expenses, I mean no, nothing. So as an E2, you know, they don't necessarily make a ton of money, but if you live on a ship and have no expenses, it goes kind of along, it can go a long way. In the six months that he was in San Diego, he blew through the $4,000 that his mom saved him. He racked up $5,000 in credit card debt, and he owed um, somewhere between 10 to 12 sailors on his ship, anywhere from 20, 40 to $100. Mm -hmm. Because he would go through his check, and then they would go to the bar or wherever they were going, and he would go, hey Clint, I'm out of money, can you borrow, can you loan me 40 bucks? So in the end, he now owes about $10,000 in debt. He's need to and he's literally been on active duty for a year. That's all the time that it took. So he came home, my client is a colonel in the Air Force, and it took really a very short time for her to try to whip him into shape. Um, so she helped him with a loan to pay down the debt um, but one, part of the condition of her co-signing on this loan, because he's got zero credit, because the kid's 19 years old, and so part of the condition was that he had to set up a savings account, he has to set up a budget, and he has to have someone that holds him accountable, and he's going to start TSP. So the person that's holding him accountable is me, because my client, who's on active duty, doesn't want to have to worry about a conflict of interest with her being an officer and him being enlisted, even though it is her nephew. So we have a once a month phone call for me to check up on what the amount of savings is, for him to check up on the amount of TSP that he is doing and to slowly increase his budget. Because what my client has told him is, you know, right now you don't have an issue, but what happens if your buddy next to you on the boat sees you now on the ship, sees you go take $40 and go buy something else, 
a video game or something. And he says, look, why are you taking your $40 and buying, or 60 because video games aren't $40, $60 to buy your video game when you owe me $40? Next thing you know, something happens, you're living in close quarters, and now your CEO does know. It can very quickly escalate up the chain. So that's an, a very quick example, and it, it took him nine months. Nine months to go from $4,000 in savings to owing close to 10. And he just has no idea. He just, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to save. He just has, he has zero concept of how to create a budget. So they walk through and they figure out a budget, but she likes that there's someone else that's going to hold him accountable so that she can just be the aunt that, you know, gives him a hug, not the aunt that also kicks him in the butt along the way. Um, so there's lots of examples like this out in the fleet. When we were in Germany, my husband, when we were on active duty, they made a huge deal about because you used to be able to float a check, and then we went to the electronic, you put the check in and whoop, whoop, and then it's out of your bank account. For six months leading up to the point where we had the electronic checks, six months FRGs, family writing ups groups, put out, you will not on 1 January be able to float checks anymore. Mm -hmm. And we have to six months prepare families to say, do not go to the grocery store on the 29th, because if you run your check through, it's not gonna work. So. It's a much bigger issue than all of us think. And my husband, when we were on active duty, you know, we would talk about these things, and half the time he doesn't believe that people have problems or issues because we don't. And so he thinks, oh, everyone's <coughs> doing what we're doing. Everyone's doing this. I'm like, if everyone did what we did, we, I wouldn't have a job. Um, so it's, it's really very important. I'm sure everyone else has lots of stories about what they see, but it, it can really create issues once you go to the fleet. And I'll just add that this person Gretz is talking about is not a client. We don't work with E2s as clients because we don't think they really have a good example of the maturity to do that. And our company only works with E5 and above and officers for reasons having to do with maturity. I wouldn't argue that a second lieutenant or an ensign are, are any more mature than an E2, but you know, that's up to you guys to, to think about. But that, the point is that we, we help people without any, without any uh, compensation if they're below those ranks. Other stories from you guys or questions? Up here, sir. Um, 27 years Army. Uh, just a, a, There's a lot of diverse folks here in the room, <coughs> and I just want to plant an idea. Uh, when you go into a combat environment, or, you know, that's the Army term, but when you go in there, there's the tax-free status that the service member enjoys. So as you, whatever your family's plans or situation is, Keep in mind that when the, if they're standing here in the United States and then they're standing in Kuwait or Iraq or whatever it is, then there'll be something else in the future, unfortunately. When they're standing in that place, their transactions are tax-free. And I'll turn the gavel back over to you because uh, there's a lot that the service member can do with that tax-free status to enhance their personal situation. Great comment, thank you. And there's even a 10% savings program that you can participate in on deployment, the guaranteed return of 10%. This is a government program. SDP, the Savings yeah. Deposit Program. Right, thank you. That uh, fits right into your point, sir. Thank you very much. And you have to know about it. Right, and often they don't. Um, we're a completely non-military family, so this is all new to us, but I am a CPA. Wonderful. So in the same idea of being deployed, can you speak to how title, their account should be titled and power of attorney Primary, um, the, the, officers. Uh, the how services. How that work? Great question. The services all provide deployment preparation, right. whether it's just on a ship uh, in, in the Mediterranean or in harm's way. And ships are often in harm's way just by definition uh, of their mobility. And they have to have durable powers, powers of attorney that may include their parents mm -hmm. if they're single. They have. <coughs> they have to have. Uh, at least uh, wills that are called by law. They're, they're, uh, you know that as well as I do as a CPA. And, uh, but most of their finances are not complex. So th those vehicles that they sign and so on are, are, are rudimentary. But this is a, you brought in a great point. We had uh, about uh, a year ago in our office, we had uh, a, a Navy SEAL had been killed who was the, the son of one of our clients, a Naval Academy graduate 
the seal was out in San Diego, not our client. He was a client out there. We, we are local to our, our states for <coughs> our clients. And uh, even though he went to that deployment briefing, he had just gotten married. He did not change the beneficiary on his service members group life insurance. 400,000 plus another 100,000 of what's called death gratuity, half a million dollars. He said, I'll do it when I get back. Now, the advisor uh, later probably figured out that he should have asked him that question, but the, the deployment folks responsible for that did not insure it, and it wasn't under us. It was under a government benefit. So we feel like that's educational, that you have to let people know, uh, under, especially because we're still a pretty deployed force. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in one way or another, and we're not sure exactly where we are right now with ISIS and all the other kinds of uh, dangers in the world, so that's a great question. But I don't know if I, if I answered anybody else anything to Well, add? one of the nice things about kind of modern technology is that most places accept bills. Um, but we'll set bill pay straight oh, yeah. from a computer. Yeah. Um, I will tell you, other, go home and ask your mid if they have a book of checks. <laughs> like, <laughs> like only like 10% of them actually do. Um, so one of the things, I had a midshipman that came in last summer and as soon as she got to her duty assignment, she was getting on a ship. And for her, it was going through the process of figuring out what bills she had to pay and how to automatically pay them so that a lot of that is taken care of. And then some things like the electric bill and those that come monthly, you know, she's gonna have to, she had roommates in this case, so her roommates were gonna take care of it. But it is a bigger issue if you don't have someone that's at home that can take care of those bills. But yeah, walking through a budget and figuring out how to monthly bill pay as much as you can just makes it a little bit easier. And military power attorneys usually are good for two years. Um, a lot of financial institutions, um, don't exactly. really like anything over six months to a year. Usually, because um, when we first we had people that were, they would push back on six months. I'm like, well, they're gone for a year. What do you want me to do? Have them get a second power of attorney? So you can usually you can push someone, um, but every year they should kind of revisit who their power of attorney is. Where are you, a CPA? I'm North Carolina. Okay. Well, if you want a reference to an office, we have a lot of offices around Fort Bragg. If you wanted to be referred, I'd be delighted to help you. Great. Sir. I'll just throw this out to the parish that I got a son graduating this year. Uh, power of attorney is important. They need to be specific. Be very careful of giving out a general power of attorney. That means you can execute anything in that person's name across the board. So if he or she wants to give somebody a power of attorney, whether it be you or their wife or whatever, make sure it's specific. And then in terms of a will, I would tell you to highly recommend that every one of your kids does a will. It is a free service through the JAG. It's not a requirement for deployments. Even though we go through the deployment process, we do not have to have a will. But I will tell you to safeguard them and protect what they have, make sure they do a will. Always good to update. Wait for a time for one more. And piggybacking on the, the will thing, I was, with my first husband, I was a recipient of the SGLI. Um, I know we had gone to do wills. He didn't sign his. He was supposed to have gone to sign his will. Um, he was killed the next day. He, he missed the appointment because he had to um, testify at a court martial. So he was gonna go the next day and he was killed. So they told me that um, the will was invalid, was not legitimate because it was not signed. But something that I've learned um, working civil service is beneficiaries. Somebody made the comment one time on Valentine's Day, you think of your loved ones. Think about your beneficiaries on Valentine's Day and update at that point too. That's and you might want to, to update your wills Great point. at some point. We do that. I mean, and I, my, my husband now says I'm paranoid and I say, well, I've been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. so, <yeah. laughs> Paranoids have real enemies. You know? <laughs> Thank you so much for that comment. We have a couple more minutes if there are other questions or comments, please. I just have a comment because this, this, this has come like a day late for me. I have a son who's um, being deployed today. He is in route to a very dangerous place. And I didn't ask any of these questions. He's not in um, the Navy, he's in the Air Force. And um, he's, he 
he's 21, so it's like, I, did, I don't ask those questions because he basically doesn't want me to ask those questions. So now you're, you're telling me, you know, you're saying all this, and I'm thinking about him, and I'm thinking I don't know. Let me just tell you one thing. He can still do things while he's on deployment. If you want to come to our table and give us his email address, we're not going to make him a client or anything else like that. We can't do that. Uh, but we could give him some advice in an email. We'd be glad to help out in any way we can. Uh, it, that's the issue that the definition of a fiduciary uh, is something we take very seriously. The government is really not a fiduciary. The government does not have an obligation to tell you everything that you should do. And often they tell you in a whirlwind of information, like Gretchen described when her husband went through pre deployments before he went to Iraq, and they give you so much information you can't even hear it all. So if there's any way we can assist you at this yeah, that point. That would be great. Sure. Well, I, I haven't had a whole lot of contact with him. I know that that pre-deployment, sure. yeah. things that are happening and you're going yeah. to, a, to a place and you're getting ready to go sure. and, he's, and he's far away from right. us, right. that it was very stressful for him. It had to be because I wouldn't, I wouldn't hear from him yes. at all for yes. weeks. I didn't hear from him for weeks. And, and, and that's, he's been kind of stuck in limbo right. and getting ready to get on that plane and go. And, and he was, I was talking to him this morning before. And that's kind of a motivation also to all of you about just getting more information to your midshipmen. Once they leave, I'll give you an example. They, if you, anybody here having with a mid who's going Marine? Whoa, good. Wow. <laughs> the Marine pace at the Petillioner's course in Quantico, you might not hear from them. You send a text and you might get an answer back in a week. You send an email, you might get you, you might get a call in two weeks because they're in the field. And I I was an infantry officer, you know, we, we don't have cell phones in the field. There's there's no you know let me go call my mom just a minute, guys. I know we're supposed to take that, <laughs> that, that hill, but I, I don't cell have cell phones I, didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait a minute, phones didn't exist. <laughs> it was like a suitcase. It was too big to carry around. That's all true. But but to be fair. They will get so busy and they'll say, Mom, I don't have time. They have time now, even if it's on a Saturday morning, to sit down and say, how do I got to take care of my Marines? How do I got to take care of my sailors? How do I got to take care of myself? And that's the kind of stuff we do. And every, there's 50 years of, of military service standing right behind me, so we've been there. Okay. <coughs>